Today we're going to compare the Baby Zen Yo-Yo 2 and the Upper Baby Minu V2, two of our favorite Ultra Compacts that each deliver somewhat different ideal use value as a result of variations in how they're built. So let's jump straight into it then, looking at the advantages and disadvantages of each model in turn, and focusing on their differences in terms of child comfort, ease of use, longevity and driving characteristics, before ending with a discussion of under what conditions and uses one might make a better purchase over the other. And starting off with the Yo-Yo, the model clocks in at 6.2 kilos and folds down to 52 by 44 by 18 centimeters. It can take 22 kilos in the seat and 5 kilos in its underslung shopping basket. The Yo-Yo has decent overall dimensions in terms of its ability to seat a larger child, but is otherwise a bit on the shorter side with regards to the length of its seat back and its lack of an inbuilt leg rest. There is an attachable leg rest sold as an extra accessory, but it's unfortunately not all that long either. All of which simply means that the reclined position offers a bit less comfort for older toddlers in comparison to some other ultra compacts on the wider market. When it comes to parent comfort, the Yo-Yo has a non-adjustable handle height of 106 centimeters, an acceptably sized shopping basket, for a travel model anyway, and a relatively easy to accomplish two-stage fold, resulting in a package that's pleasantly light and both small enough to fit within the IATA's guidelines for cabin luggage, and more importantly, quite flat, which, when combined with the Yo-Yo's long padded shoulder strap, makes it the most comfortable model out there in my opinion to carry slung from your shoulder. Looking at longevity, the Yo-Yo is designed quite simply and sturdily and has already proven itself over many generations to hold up quite well over time, provided that it's used as a travel model for shorter trips or as a complementary small-sized option for parents who also have a somewhat larger stroller as their all-day, everyday workhorse. In situations where the yo-yo is used more roughly than this, forced to carry more weight than it can tolerate, in particular if we're talking about bags hung from the handle or the use of a wheeled board, and if it's also used all day over rougher streets, then my experience is that the naturally lighter weight and slighter build required for it to function well as an ultra compact does tend to mean that it loosens up and gets a bit rickety after a couple of years. Looking lastly at the model's driving characteristics, the Yo-Yo feels sturdy and stable to drive around over smooth terrain, and its slightly above average wheel size for a model of this sort will allow for limited use over stuff like gravel, lawns, and broken sidewalks when you can't avoid such conditions. Alright, moving on to the Minu V2, the model weighs in at a heavier 7.6 kilos and folds down to a larger 32 by 52 by 58 centimeters, with the bumper bar attached. It can take the same 22 kilos in the seat, but a weightier 9 kilos in the underslung shopping basket. The Minu V2 seat has similar dimensions to the Yo-Yo's, with a few small differences, including a slightly wider but shallower baseboard and a couple more centimeters length with the seat back, and with the only real major advantage being that it has an, albeit somewhat short, adjustable leg rest that does improve comfort in the reclined position for the early toddler phase, though like the Yo-Yo, the smaller seating length overall doesn't provide an optimal reclined position for older children. The Minu V2's canopy is better than the Yo-Yo's in my opinion, as the extra extension zipped into the back provides better sun coverage than the Yo-Yo sun flap. As far as parent comfort is concerned, the Minu V2 has a slightly lower handle height at 104 centimeters, but a much larger and more accessible shopping basket. Folding the model is a little easier in that it involves only a single step that can be accomplished with one hand. When folded down, however, the Minu V2 is not only not within the IATA's guidelines for cabin luggage, meaning you may often have to gate check it, but is also not nearly as comfortable to carry around as the Yo-Yo, despite also having a shoulder strap due to being a lot more bulky. Moving on to look at longevity, the Minu V2 has a much sturdier overall chassis structure than the Yo-Yo, and much better suspension, which reduces the effects of wear on loosening up its joints and connection points. It's still not a model where I would advise hanging heavy bags from the handle or using a wheeled board, but it is capable of handling all-day, everyday use over rougher streets, gravel, and so on, without either feeling as jittery as the Yo-Yo or loosening up too much as a result of such use. That being said, the model does have one area, its wire-based two-pedal brake system, that needs a bit of regular lubrication, and where it's sometimes necessary to replace the brake wire, while with the Yo-Yo, the only common repair I tend to see is the need to occasionally replace the wheels or ball bearings. So, 
Which of these two models should you get then? In my opinion, both the YoYo 2 and Minu V2 are a bit more specialized than a lot of other ultra compacts, with the YoYo being much more ideal for travel or for any lifestyle where you regularly need to fold and carry your stroller, such as if you live in a big city and take crowded public transport many times a day, for example. Conversely, if the environment where you live or a holiday destination that you plan to travel to is a bit rougher with mostly broken sidewalks, unavoidable dirt paths, or lighter cobblestones, for example, then I'd prefer the Minu V2. And I'd also recommend the Minu as a better choice over the Yo-Yo if you plan to use your Ultra Compact with a newborn or for most situations where you're planning to get an Ultra Compact as your all-day, everyday stroller. In any case, we hope you found this video interesting, and if you did, please subscribe, as this sort of support really helps us to continue making videos in the future. If you'd like to know more about either of these models, we have standalone reviews that go into a lot more detail, and links have been added in the description. In addition, if you're currently shopping for a stroller, we have a buyer's guide on our Patreon page which lists a wide range of models that we recommend, with a lot of technical and lifestyle related information. You can find it by following the link in the description as well. Thank you.